It happened right here, on this very spot, at this corner, in this prairie, and on this street. This is where our lives happened. Wherever we found ourselves, we did our best, in the cities, in the smallest towns, and in places that seemed like another world. What we didn't know, we learned. And what we did know helped build the towns that built America. At times, we were greeted as partners. Other times, with prejudice. And sometimes, we were greeted with nothing at all. When doors were closed to us, we built our own. Our communities were small, but those who came from them touched the world. There's a story to be told, our story. And it happened right here. It's a story of our expanding country. They come to the Midwest all sorts of ways, up from Texas, down from Canada. You're also getting lots of messages. Go West, and we're gonna help you, in fact. So how is it Jews end up in North and South Dakota? Because there's a lot of organizations in New York, including synagogues that say, we'll even buy you the cow and the plow. Just keep going. First of all, at its peak, there were like 43,000 Jews in Minnesota. That's not a lot. There was no big garment industry as there was in New York or Chicago. So you've got more business owners. And these are Scandinavians you're living with. You're going to be respectful. You're going to slow down. I think living, living in a different ethnic mix made a big difference. And knowing that unless you were in the middle of the north side of Minneapolis, you were not the majority. Our story is very unique. It's about going along to get along. And I was involved because a friend of mine, Marilyn Chaya, had just been doing research for a number of women, Jewish women, up on the range in Hibbing, Eveleth, Virginia, and she had collected m quite a bit of material. This is an interview with Mrs. Ruth Goldberg of Akeley, Minnesota, for the project to document Jewish settlers in rural Minnesota. The interviewer is Marilyn J. Shiat. I was teaching at the University of Minnesota when I felt there was a need to do research on the Jewish communities that settled outside of the Twin Cities area. They had been generally ignored in all of the histories of uh, Minnesota Jewry. Kind of out of this, my need to find a place to give a home to this wonderful material I was collecting grew the, the Jewish Historical Society. It was a group of community members who thought this is an incredible story and we need to make sure it becomes part of Minnesota's story. One day, Rabbi Bernard Raskus called me and said, are you sitting down? And he said, I'm a friend of former Governor Elmer L. Anderson, and we were speaking and I told him about the archives, and he said they ought to be at the University of Minnesota because this archival facility should reflect everybody, every religion, every entity in the state. And with an invitation like that, we moved here. The advantage of being a partner with the university and to provide them with the archives that 
were created back when Teresa, Linda, Sharon, you know, they were visionaries. Teresa and Nathan were primary in realizing that there was a value to having this material housed at the university. The gift that the Burmans made to the university on behalf of the Jewish Historical Society was critical and continues to fund the archivist today. We are in Elmer L. Anderson Library. This is the home of archives and special collections for the University of Minnesota Libraries. And this is where the Upper Midwest Jewish Archives resides. In 2000, about half of the archives came here. In 2012, the Jewish Historical Society uh, gifted the entire collection to the University of Minnesota Libraries. The Jewish Historical Society really works with uh, events and programming in the community, and I work with researchers. So when people are interested in researching materials related to local Jewish history, they come to me. We constantly have researchers coming in looking at materials, and so it gives them another life as they're findable and usable here in the libraries. For the Jewish Historical Society to find itself now 35 years in to this idea that just welled up from a few people that this is too important of a story to let go. I don't think they could have envisioned a better outcome to end up with materials held at the university in perpetuity, to be able to now turn to what we also do so well, to tell that story loudly to anyone and everyone who will come and hear it. I think connecting people is so important, and to me that's history. If you connect people to their history, you're connecting them to, a, to so much. I wanted to focus on making this story relevant, to make people understand that our life here was, was very successful, and yet we retained our core of Judaism. My oldest sister was born in 1929, and she was diagnosed with, here locally, the doctor said, you have to get her down to Chicago immediately. He suspected cancer in the eye, but he wasn't sure. And like Dad said, he didn't know what he was gonna do. So he happened to see Louie, and Louie said, Joe, you look down in the dumps, what's up? And Dad said, well, I just got some family things. And Louis said, you come in. So we took him in his store and sat down and visited with him. And my dad, and he never told me this story till almost on his dying bed. And he said that Mr. Friedman wrote down some names and then he got out a checkbook and wrote out a check and signed it. And he gave my dad the check. He said, you fill it in for whatever amount you need. He said, we'll worry about it when you get home. Your dad and you helped us, referring to the Jewish people up in that community. And he said, now it's our turn to help you. Our history has been told by others. Now it's time for us to tell our history. It's fine for us to tell people what this building meant in this community and what this community, what this Jewish community meant to this larger community. There were only a thousand Jews on the Iron Range. But think of the impact they had. Faces captured in sepia and black and white remain as proof of the lives we lived. From the smallest towns, most have moved on, while some remain for eternity. In the old neighborhoods, memories live within the buildings that still stand and the places we gathered. But for future generations, who may never hold a snapshot or page through a photo album, there is still a history to keep. It is a history that will be told in pixels and live in the clouds. For this reason, our mission doesn't change, it evolves. 
we will continue to be living proof of the faith it takes and the hope we have. For the lives we lived and continue to live as Jews in these places, our record will be kept, our testimonies recorded, our stories will be told. We will ensure that we are the writers and the keepers of history, because it is our history. And it happened right here.